Well, thank you for joining me for our devotional in Mark chapter 5 today. Uh, Mark 5 verses 1 to 20 follows on directly from the story of Jesus crossing the Sea of Galilee and stilling, stilling the storm. And what happens at the start of the story is the disciples and Jesus get out of the boat and they encounter a man who's in an incredibly bad way. He has uh, been plagued by demonic forces in his life so, to the point where he's now living amongst the tombs uh, locally to, to where, where he would have uh, lived before. He's been ostracised, effectively pushed out of his local community. And uh, he is uh, in torment. He's in anguish day and night, screaming and cutting himself. He's involved in self-harming uh, to the point where actually he's just in an incredibly bad way. And so Jesus encounters this man and sets about an amazing miracle of healing him and restoring him and setting him free from the demonic forces in this man's life. And uh, what happens is, is that actually as Jesus starts to encounter what's going on, it turns out that there's not one demonic force involved in plaguing this man, but there are many. In fact, they reveal themselves as a legion. Now, a legion in terms of Roman soldier terms would be 6,000 soldiers. There are th- perhaps thousands of demons that are in, uh, in, engaged in this man's life. And Jesus, they plead with Jesus that he might send them out into a herd of pigs. And so Jesus obliges and this herd of pigs then go into a frenzy and go off of a, a hillside into the Sea of Galilee. Uh, and in doing so, they, they are destroyed. Now, from an animal welfare point of view, we put our sort of 21st century hat on. We think that's so unfair, these poor, these poor pigs. Actually, I just think there's something here about uh, Jesus' value system. You see, Jesus values this man's restoration and this man's life more than 2,000 pigs. You know, God values our lives to the point where he's prepared to send his own son into the world to die for us, that we might uh, know him and uh, have a relationship with him. You know, God places a high value on our lives. That's just an aside anyway. But so, so what happens after that? Well, this man is restored. He is uh, he's made he's made right again. And he's uh, then engaged the local community, find out about it. Jesus meets with them. And their one their kind of reaction to it isn't one of amazement or wonder. It's actually of fear, just like the disciples in the boat crossing Galilee. They're frightened. Why are they frightened? Well, they're scared that if Jesus stays with them any longer, maybe they will lose more of their uh, it will cost them more because this herd of pigs that have gone into the sea would have represented quite a, a good income for somebody. So they're concerned about that. But also, I think they're frightened as well, because actually there's they've been found out by Jesus. You see, actually, in many ways, the community are just as bad as the demons in this, this man's life. The community have turned a blind eye to this man's need for, for perhaps many years. He's been ostracised, as I said earlier on. He's been pushed out. He's now living among the tombs where, you know, in a, from a Jewish context, not that this was necessarily a Jewish area that they were in, but from a Jewish context, actually that's a, a, an area of ritual impurity. You wouldn't necessarily want to go there. And this man is living there. It, it says in the text that actually at some point there was, there's been an attempt made to actually uh, prison him, imprison him, shackle him up and chain him. But he keeps breaking free of the chains. It says that nobody can subdue him anymore, which... Sounds to me like at some point he was subdued, perhaps even beaten. This man's actually not only experienced spiritual torment, but he's also experienced physical uh, torment at the hands of people who uh, don't want to actually take any care in him at all. And there's a challenge for us in this as the people of God. You see, we're called to be a different kind of community from the, 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 the world. We're called to be a community who actually care about people's spiritual needs and their physical needs. We're called to be a community who cares about the welfare of others. This should challenge us. Do we turn a blind eye to need where we see it? And and, and actually, it's it's kind of easy to deal with the material need stuff. It's easy to be kind to somebody or to be nice to them. But actually, sometimes it's harder to maybe look to meet people's spiritual needs by telling them about Jesus. You see, in this story, we see an amazing miracle take place. Jesus uh, takes this man who's been enslaved to the demonic and he sets him free. Jesus takes this man who has been broken and damaged by the demonic forces in his life and he heals him. This man's restored. And Jesus then restores this man to the local community as well. He's back in in, in standing with other people. Jesus encourages him to go off and declare the mercy of God to those around him. Look, you and I have been given a mandate to declare that the kingdom is at hand. And as we go out into the world today and we engage with people, let's step forward in faith, knowing that actually God's called us not just to meet people's uh, material needs, but also their spiritual needs as well. We're called to go and declare the kingdom of God, to proclaim the good news that Jesus sets people free from sin, from shame and from things that bind them.